love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union. Hello comrades and welcome back to the Shanka show. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about retail in Soviet Union and actually we're going to talk about the very first grocery supermarkets that I saw in Kiev, Ukraine. Uh, since I grew up in Kiev, the capital of Soviet Ukraine, Soviet Ukrainian Socialist Republic, most of my uh, stories are about Kiev. So if you remember, uh, after we moved from the dorm room into one room apartment on Malodegvardieska street number 16, which you can see on this map, this is the view from the satellite of Kiev. Unfortunately, this is the modern photo, so it looked different than it looked in 1980s. So this is kind of older area. Uh, it was developed, you know, most houses were built maybe in 40s and 50s. And then if they had empty lots, they put newer buildings, like uh, the building that I lived with my parents was built in 1980. So we moved to a brand new area. Uh, that whole area was called uh, South Barshigovka, Southern uh, Yuzhna Barshigovka. So there was a hundreds of uh, nine story high and 16 story high buildings. There was, the whole thing was developed at once. There was architect who designed all these buildings, you know, where they're going to locate it and what kind. And they pre-planned how many schools they're going to put. So the whole area was pre-planned. And of course they had some kind of formulas that for so many uh, thousands of people or uh, thousands of apartments, we need to have, you know, so many daycare, uh, kindergartens, so many schools, uh, so many grocery stores. So this whole area was built pretty much in the period of close to like five years or less. And right away there was all the stores were put in. And um, anyway, so this is how it looks, this brand new area. And you could see it's all like by, <laughs> built by the ruler. Everything is lined up perfectly. So as we talked uh, earlier, most uh, stores in the older areas of Soviet cities, uh, they were just a part of the regular uh, apartment building. So the first floor will be taken by gastronome or other kind of a store. And then above there'll be people uh, lived. In the new area, they finally figure out that they can just build a dedicated buildings just for retail. Most grocery stores, uh, were open from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. So 12 hours. And as I mentioned, sometimes you had to go and get in line before the store is open so you can get stuff before it gets sold out. Uh, also, every store had a lunch break. It's kind of, you know, for people who grew up in America or other Western countries, it's kind of unheard of that you just close the store to take a lunch. Uh, but that was the thing, for example, from 1 to 2 p.m. or from 2 to 3 p.m., the store will be closed and abiding the period. There'll be a sign hanging on the door, closed for lunch for about one hour. So you need to kind of know because some stores will be closed from 1 to 2, some will be closed from 2 to uh, 3. So if you plan your shopping trip, and of course most people didn't have cars, so you have to walk miles and miles and miles, so you need to time it right when you show up by the store. Also, they had uh, some other different breaks. Uh, one was called Periuchot, and they, will, they can close the store for an hour or two for so-called Periuchot, which you can say like maybe it's a making, uh, taking inventory. So they supposedly calculate how many items they have, what did they sell, but people were always upset about it. They just say, you know, they just don't want to be open or they want to take another break. So they just hang the sign says we have a inventory break and they closed again. So it would be quite infuriating if you walked for 20 minutes uh, to buy some carrots and suddenly you see the fruits and vegetable store is closed because they have an inventory hour. So you have to hang out for an hour or come back. 
Another break they used quite often was called sanitarny chas, and that's probably like cleaning uh, and disinfecting the stores. And they also they'll shut it down for an hour, middle of the day. They'll, you know, why would you waste your time working after hours if you can just close the store in the middle of the day and clean it? So it shows you that people in retail that didn't really care about sales. It didn't matter to them how much they will sell. They just uh, were, you know, that was always impression that stores often close just so they can take a break and don't work. So while I was researching for some photos information for, for this video, I found, I stumbled upon that in 1979, so we still lived in an old apartment, but we was a couple of years away from moving. Uh, in Kiev, we was about two and a half million people population. Kiev had 541 gastronom stores, which is a grocery store. And also they had four so-called universam. And this is the closest thing we ever got to a uh, supermarket, but it was predominantly grocery store with a little uh, departments when they sold, uh, sold other items, like nothing major, no electronics, you know, no letters or paint, just maybe you can buy uh, needles and some other things, maybe little pens and pencils, so nothing major, but mostly there was a grocery store, but Universum, and it translates like universal store, uh, self with self-help. So you help yourself, you, uh, we didn't have a card, but we have a basket, you grab a basket and you just walk uh, the aisles like in a normal supermarket and then on the way out there's a cash register and cashier, you paid cash for your items and you leave. The one uh, that you see right here on the picture, that's the Universum that I went quite often. It was pretty close to our area, we had another one, but this is I believe it's the very first uh, Universum built ever in Kiev. It was a really modern building and it actually was designed by a quite famous uh, Ukrainian architect uh, Michael Budilovsky. And he also designed some other really cool buildings uh, which we're gonna see on the following pictures. So Michael Budilovsky uh, was born in 1928 in Zhitomir region in a small town of Radomyshal. And in 1953, he uh, graduated from the Kiev uh, Construction Institute. That's how they call a lot of universities. They call them institute. Um, he was a Jewish person. And uh, so he became an architect. And also apparently in 1951, uh, he was among uh, 13 students that signed a letter protesting that one of the, their teachers was uh, fired from the college he went because he was uh, cosmopolitism. I even don't know what the heck is it about, but there was a famous thing about cosmopolitism. So I guess maybe you don't support the idea of socialism. You talking about different, I don't need to search for that. If anyone knows what cosmopolitism is, you can Put in the comments. So he designed quite a few really cool modern concrete buildings. Uh, one of them was uh, the College for Music and Dance that he designed in 1966. He designed a whole new uh, big complex for the Kiev University which was built in 19 uh, 70s, 72, 74. Then he helped to design the whole giant uh, apartment complex called Abalon in Kiev, and as well as a Universam store. And the very first Universam in Kiev on Nikolska Bershegovka was designed and built in 1973. And interesting, so I wasn't at Universum quite often because it was pretty close to where I lived. But it just happened that I uh, was also visited the other famous building at uh, Mr. Um, Mikhail Budilovsky design. It was a building for the Republican Children Library. 
It was located quite far away from us. It took me at least an hour to get there. And um, we had like a trip with several friends of mine who also like to read. Um, that library had a huge selection and I was a big fan of uh, science fiction. So that was the best place to get good books would be go to the Republican Children's Library on Nivki. And uh, there, so that happens that this uh, famous architect, I was uh, in two of his buildings, but he didn't like uh, working in Soviet Union, although he was extremely famous and successful. And he emigrated to United States in 1978. He left for Chicago. And from 1978 till 1999, till his retirement, he worked in Chicago in the company Murphy and John Architects. And he, his achievements in Soviet Union were completely wiped out. His names were removed from everywhere. So no one knew his name anymore in Soviet Union because he became a traitor. But initially, you know, I live not far from Chicago, so I was at his uh, cool buildings in Kiev and apparently, I hope he's still alive, I couldn't find out information, but yeah, Michael Budilovsky, famous Soviet architect, um, migrated to Chicago in 1978. Uh, that's what, 10, uh, and I migrated 10 years later. <laughs> I live close by Chicago. Of course, uh, designing grocery stores or large Universums grocery stores in Soviet Union uh, architects never considered anything like parking for cars because, you know, Soviet society, as we talk already, was public transportation society and we didn't have a lot of cars. Uh, some videos ago I mentioned that for the big uh, nine-story high building where approximately maybe about 150 families live, there will be a parking spot maybe for 10 cars max. So as you see in this original picture from 1973, uh, there's only people and delivery vans. There is no cars parked. And all that open area is just for people walking. Now, there is an interesting photo. Uh, this is a combination of original picture from uh, probably early 80s because it's in color. It's the same uh, Universum that we talked about it in this video and a picture from 2014. And now it was purchased by uh, one of the uh, grocery chains called uh, Velika Kishenya Big Pocket. And as you see, they changed the design of the store and they put parking. So now people can park. That was one of the big challenges after Soviet Union collapsed and uh, borders opened up and a lot of people started buying cars that old grocery stores didn't have any adequate parking. So there was a big challenge for people uh, to park a car. So there was a lot of remodeling done in order to allow some parking. And of course, nothing changed in retail situation with Universums started popping up in the new uh, neighborhoods. We still have a shortage of food items and as you see on many photos we have that similar situation we discussed before is it's the same item filled the whole shelf so those pyramids of items like jars of the same juice or packets of the same tea or any other items that weren't like in high demand uh, slow sellers that's what the salespeople will fill them up the whole shelf so it looks like you have plenty of stuff, although in reality it was quite um, not a lot of things to choose from. And uh, as I said, in that Universum, uh, we also had a separate area when they sold alcohol. And on the second floor was some kind of like a, you can call it a bar, but cafe. So you can buy some coffee and juices again, as we also talked about it. And uh, this Universum number one uh, had a really neat location. If you could see on this photo, there was a, I think the only one I know in Kiev, the circular uh, road solution. So you have uh, uh, roads coming from four ways 
and in the middle uh, there was a tramway uh, which was uh, split and one going to the left was a, a tramway line number one going actually to my neighborhood to South Borshagovka and number three will go straight um, till the end of the Kiev which will be surrounded by the ring road so this is how they designed the solution there is no stoplights and there is uh, just uh, uh, merged traffic signs and as you see this is approximately 1987 hardly any cars on the road so the road's always empty most people are walking and so you see it's pretty neat solution how the people can walk under the highway uh, and then there's an overpass bridge over the tramway lanes and that one also called speed tramway Skarasnoy tramway which was um, in the middle of the right in the middle of the so they have like a highway uh, two lanes going each way and between the lanes there will be two lanes of tram so the tramway won't be slowed down by the car traffic will be going on its own so that was pretty neat solution so this is uh, very close where I used to live so this concludes my story about the first real Soviet grocery supermarket Uvinersam I hope you enjoy the story and we will see you soon my next project will be make uh, several videos about uh, jokes and anecdotes in the Soviet Union. And it's a quite extensive topic. I started working on it already, but it'll take me a while uh, to put together. So please be patient. Don't forget to like the videos, share with your friends. And if you can, please support this channel on patreon.com. We'll talk to you later. Goodbye.